Now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to the world over. The ever surprising Pope Francis has named a new director of the Vatican Press Office and a new editor of the Argentinian edition of the official Holy See newspaper. To react to all of this and more is longtime media director for the U.S. Bishops Conference and author of the new book, Catholics in America, Religious Identity and Cultural Assimilation, from John Carroll to Flannery O'Connor. Would you welcome Russell Shaw back to the program? Russ, thanks for being here. Thank you, Raymond. Good to uh, be here. I want to start with Pope Francis making this appointment of Greg Burke. Oh, yeah. Um, an old pal, certainly, of both yes. of us. Yeah. Uh, he was a Fox News contributor for many years, the Rome correspondent for Fox. Uh, in recent years, he's worked in the Vatican media apparatus, but now director of the Holy See Press Office. What will this mean? How do you think he will change the message there? Well, Greg is a, is a great guy. I've known, I have indeed known him a number of years. He's a friend of mine. He's a good human being and a really good professional. You, the Pope couldn't have picked anybody better than Greg Burke for this job, and it's a really tough job. Yeah. Uh, spokesman for the Holy See, and you know I've done the spokesman bit uh, for a number of years for the American bishops, and I realize how hard. <laughs> you know it is. the pitfalls. I know the pitfalls, and you know with this. Pope, his spontaneity, it's part of his charm, and, and it drives the spokesman crazy. For poor Father Lombardi, yeah. a good man and a good spokesman, often spent most of his days uh, decoding what de the Pope decoding, said. Decoding, issuing clarifications of what the Holy Father had said. Uh, but uh, if anybody can handle, handle the job, and I would say in a certain good, positive sense, handle the Pope, it's, it's Greg Burke. He's mm -hmm. tough, he's smart, and he's uh, quick on his feet. Yeah, and he knows how to shape the message also for this age and, and from beyond print, also broadcast media. Yeah, so a very encouraging appointment. Let's talk for a moment about uh, his sidekick, the vice director of the Holy See Press mm -hmm. Office, uh, Paloma Garcia. Ovejero. Mm -hmm. She's a Spanish journalist, a lay woman, the first woman to hold the post. Uh, any insight on her appointment? Well, only that it's, I think they're going to be a dynamic duo. They're, they, they, they will make a great team, I think, and they illustrate something of, of large significance in the contemporary church, namely uh, the emerging and growing role of lay people in positions of high visibility and great responsibility. So I'm much encouraged. I want to talk uh, another uh, blockbuster appointment this week. The Pope named a personal <laughs> friend of his, right. a man by the name of Marcello Figueroa, mm -hmm. as the new editor of the Argentinian edition of the Vatican newspaper. Now, this is the official newspaper of the Holy See, the paper of record. Mm -hmm. The interesting twist here is Marcello Figueroa is an evangelical Christian, mm -hmm. not a Catholic. Problematic? Well, surprising, but it's hardly hardly the last or least of uh, of this, this pope's surprises. Uh, I I would just say, you know, in in the real world, these language editions of the Servitore Romano, they serve a useful purpose, but they're totally controlled by what the pope himself says and does. They're they're kind of a, an ongoing week by week record of of the actions and the words of the Holy Father. So it's not as if the editor of, of the Argentine edition had a great deal of control over the convent content. Yeah, well, he has said he's, he'd like to insert more ecumenical uh, content into the, into the newspaper. And I'm sure the Holy Father would applaud that. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Uh, in the liturgical world, Cardinal Robert Serra this past week in London, um, or actually at the top of the month, issued a call encouraging priests to begin adapting the Mass and saying the Mass facing ad orientum, facing east, mm -hmm. away from the people. And he said Advent would be a good time to do that because we need that sacrality in the Mass. Well, this has been greeted with a backlash, the likes of which we haven't seen in a mm -hmm. number of years, uh, culminating in the Vatican spokesman, Father Lombardi, coming out announcing that the Holy Father himself has squashed this idea and it is not part of the agenda. Your reaction to all of that? It's, it's a beautiful ancient tradition and uh, I, I think it's, 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 going, to, it's going to be on, on the agenda some, some, at some time in the future. Not, I mean, not, ad orientum, facing yeah, ad, or, ad orientum. It, it means something. The symbolism is, is, is marvelous and I don't think it's going to go away. But it doesn't have to be the universal practice of the church. I'm glad Cardinal Sarah brought it up. 
and uh, maybe not today, maybe tomorrow. Well, that would be a continuation of what we saw from Pope Benedict, that sure. reform of the reform, wanting to put that, sure. the, the mass immorial in front of people mm -hmm. so that they see what it was originally intended to be and then what, it, what the evolution of it became. When the, when the liturgy is finally set in stone, it'll be dead. So I don't want to say dead liturgy. <laughs> I'm glad to see, I'm glad to have the argument going on. I'm glad to see the changes continuing to occur. Yeah. One other story we, I want to get into before we talk about your book. Um, Archbishop Chaput this week issued some guidelines <laughs> for his version of implementation of Amoris Latitia. This was mm -hmm. the Pope's exhortation on the family. It seems, well, uh, let me just lay it out. In his directives, in his archdiocese, he says, concerning divorced and remarried Catholics, they, without an annulment, they should abstain from intimacy and live as brother and sister if they want to receive communion. He says, gay Catholics should live in chastity. Now, the mayor of Philadelphia came out, blasted mm -hmm. these guidelines. He said, this is not Christian. What is Chaput doing here? And again, why the seeming disunity? We have Cardinal uh, uh, Schoenborn in Austria saying one thing, and over here we have Archbishop Chaput saying quite another. What's going on? Well, Archbishop Chaput, another friend of mine, by the way, committed an unpardonable sin. Namely, he, he, he taught Orthodox Catholic doctrine. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that in some circles today. Uh, but it is Orthodox doctrine, and uh, it, it derives directly from the, the gospel, Christ's teaching about the indissolubility of marriage. For heaven's sake, what do you expect a Catholic bishop to do except, except or teach Orthodox Catholic doctrine according to Christ's own teaching? I don't know about Cardinal Sean Bourne. He's got his own diocese to run and his own problems to deal with, but I deeply admire Archbishop Chaput for what he said and what he stands for. This is a good transition to your book, uh, Catholics in America, and in it you, you really pose the question, is it possible today in this current culture to be a good Catholic and a good American? It's an is old it? question, a very old question, and it, it's uh, never been more relevant than it is today. Uh, my answer is twofold. On the one hand, it's no, it's not possible to be a good Catholic and a good Mar American today. If by being a good American you mean uh, uncritically and unconditionally accepting the standards and values of our secularized contemporary American society, buying into that and living according to it. No, you can't be a good Catholic, faithful to your own tradition and do that. But if being a good American means becoming part of American culture as a critic, a constructive critic, a patriotic person who lo loves his country but sees the flaws, the, the, the mistakes, the errors that are so deeply embedded in our sec secularized world today and tries to change them, tries to make changes for the better, tries to do what the church has been telling us for many, many years we Catholic lay people ought to do, namely serve as evangelizers of the culture around us. Mm -hmm. If that's what being, being a good American means, and I believe deeply that it is what being a good American means today, then my answer is yes, you can and should be a good Catholic and a good American. As you mentioned, good Catholic and good American, I want to play something for you. This is Jeb Bush from this week. He did an interview with Nicole Wallace over on MSNBC on July 11th, and he yeah. reflected on his failed presidential aspirations. And in the interview, he blames Pope Francis <laughs> for a border mass he held on the U.S.-Mexican border with the rise of Donald Trump. Watch this. He goes, literally goes to northern, or to the border for a massive mass, and he had every right to, to preach the gospel there, but I don't think he should be intervening. I don't know if he understood that he was intervening mm -hmm. in, the, in our political affairs. Russell Shaw, isn't this exactly what you were talking about, that tension between <laughs> wanting to express the gospel and yet be yeah. a good American? Yeah. You know, I like I like Jay Bush. Uh, he, he, from what I know of him, he's he's, he's a good man, and, and he was a pretty good governor. Uh, but his campaign fizzled, and I'm sorry that it did fizzle, uh, because of its own internal faults and mistakes. And uh, holding the Pope responsible is just a fantasy. I wish Bush hadn't done it, and I wish he hadn't done it for his own sake, not for the sake of the Pope. Mm -hmm. As for the Pope intervening in American politics, well, I don't know if intervening is the correct word, but whatever you call of it, it, Popes have been doing things like that for a long time, and they ought to. It's part of the job. It's part of the job description of a Pope. Mm -hmm. of a pope. And what it amounts to is applying 
moral principles to the contemporary realities of the world in which we live. And sure, that's controversial sometimes, but if, if the Pope didn't do it, he'd be falling down on, on his serious responsibilities as a teacher of morality. Yeah. I want to go back to your book for a second, uh, Catholics in America. Why did you choose these figures? And you choose a handful of people, everybody from Al Smith to uh, Archbishop Sheen to Flannery O'Connor. It's sort of a mini biography of them in the context of American culture and their contribution mm -hmm. to it. Well, I chose them because, uh, you know, A, they're, they're, they're all very interesting people who had interesting lives and careers, but more to the point. I selected these 15 American Catholics because each of them in his or her own special way uh, in some manner lived out the story I'm telling. It's a story about cultural assimilation, about the Americanization of American Catholics. Mm -hmm. And that story is reflected in, in the life and career of each one of these individuals in quite different ways, quite different ways. They all didn't agree on the merits of Americanization. But all of them had something to say about it, and all of, each of them made his or her own special contribution to the argument. Before I let you go, what does it say that the most contemporary Catholic, indeed, the, the, the most, one of the most contemporary Catholics you mentioned in the book, died in 1979, Archbishop Sheen? What does that say? Well, it, it says that uh, the, the, the author of the book, namely <laughs> the, guy who's, you. the guy who's sitting here, has, has got more good sense than to write about his living contemporaries mm -hmm. on a hot-button issue like this one. Yeah, but it, it, you do feel a contraction in that um, contributing and vibrant Catholic witness, whether it be in the arts, in politics, and in other areas, than we saw in times gone by. Oh, yes, it, uh, it, it's, what shall I say, our culture has changed. The challenge to American Catholics has changed in the last half century. Well, the faith has, has changed, too. And the faith has changed, too. Uh, we've, got, we've, got a very, we've got a very serious crisis, cultural crisis in our country and a corresponding crisis in our church. And I think, you know, the, the health of the church lies largely in being uh, an evangelizer and, and in a certain sense, a rescuer of, of American secular culture from the pit into which it seems to be falling and falling and falling ever more deeply every day. So that's, that's, that's the job, I think, of American Catholicism today. Not, not to be accommodating to the culture, but to change the culture for, its be for the better. Russell Shaw, thank you for being here. And Russell's new book, Catholics in America from Ignatius Press is available now at bookstores everywhere and through EWTN's religious catalog at EWTNRC.com.